Jean William Frith Piaget was a Swiss psychologist known for his work on child development. Piaget in his teens published so many scientific papers on molluscs that is marine animals such as oyster, clams, octopus, snails and squid that he was offered a job as the curator of the molluscs collection at the Museum of Natural History in Geneva. He told the museum officials that he wanted to finish high school first. Piaget studied geology and philosophy at the University of Neuchatel, Switzerland and psychology at the University of Zurich. For a while, Piaget worked in Alfred Binet's laboratory in Paris developing intelligent tests for children. The reasons children gave their wrong answers fascinated him and this prompted him to study the thinking behind their answers. This question intrigued him for the rest of his life. Now, Piaget's Theories and Contributions Piaget's theory asserts that intellectual development is a direct continuation of inborn biological development. He suggested that children move through four different stages of learning. His theory focuses not only on understanding how children acquire knowledge but also on understanding the nature of intelligence. Piaget viewed children as a little philosopher and scientist building their own individual theories of knowledge based on logical structure that develop over time and through experience. Thus, children of different ages view the world in entirely different ways from adults. Piaget developed the concept of genetic epistemology which also known as developmental theory of knowledge and is the study of the origins of knowledge. It posits that humans cognition mature as they go through the different stages of development. Piaget pioneered the study of children's intellectual development. He argued that children's understanding of the world progresses through four stages of development. Sensory motor stage, pre-operational stage, concrete operational stage and formal operational stage. Schemas are thought processes that are essentially building blocks of knowledge. A child may have a schema about a type of animal such as a dogs. If the child's sole experience has been small dogs, a child might believe that all dogs are small, furry and have four legs. Suppose then that the child encounters an enormous dog. The child will take in this new information modifying the previously existing schema to include these new observations. Adaptation is the adjustment to the environment. Basic processes are involved in adaptations are assimilation and accommodation. Assimilation is how we use our existing schemas to interpret a new situation or object. In the previous example, seeing a dog and labeling it dog is a case of assimilating the animal into the child's dog schema. A child seeing a skunk for the first time might call it a cat. Thus, the knowledge bank is increased to include new information. Accommodation is what happens when we change a schema or create new one to fit new information we learn. The child accommodates when they understand that not all furry four-legged creatures are cats. Equilibration is the search for mental balance between cognitive schemas and information from the environment. Equilibrium happens when we are able to use assimilation to fit in most of the new information we learn. So, we are not constantly adding new schemas. Disequilibration Disequilibrium in Piaget's theory, the out of balance state that occurs when a person realizes that his or her current way of thinking are not working to solve a problem or understand a situation. Maturation is the physical and psychological growth that occurs in the child at a specific stage. Experience is when the child thinks interacts with the real and concrete objects in the external environment. Social interaction involves the child socializing with others, especially children. The last factor of stage movement is equilibration. This occurs when the child brings together maturation, experience and social interaction in order to build mental schema. Piaget's early work formed the basis of constructivist movement. In constructivist learning theory, the idea is that students actively construct their own knowledge. The mind of the student mediates input from the outside world to determine what the student will learn. Learning is an active mental work, not passive reception of teaching. In constructivist learning, individuals draw on their experience of the world around them in many different forms and work to make sense of what they perceive in order to build an understanding of what is around them. 
Piaget's theory has influenced education and parenting. Here are some practical ways teachers and parents can put his ideas to work. Remember that kids often learn best by doing things rather than hearing about them. Learning to solve problem is not something that can be taught. It must be discovered. The process of learning is as important than the end result. Don't try to teach a child something that they are not ready to learn. According to Piaget stages, kids must master one level before they move on to the next. Kids learn as much from each other as from parents or teachers. Give them projects to do together as well as individual tasks. One of the main points of Piaget's theory is that creating knowledge and intelligence is an inherently active process. Piaget provided support for the idea that children think differently than adults. And his research identified several important milestones in the mental development of children. His work also generated interest in cognitive and developmental psychology. Piaget's theories are widely studied today by the student of both psychology and education. He once said the principal goal of education in the schools should be creating men and women who are capable of doing new things, not simply repeating what other generations have done. Piaget also held many chair positions throughout his career and conducted research in psychology and epistemology. He created the International Center for Genetic Epistemology in 1955 and have served as its director until his death on September 16, 1980. For further exploration of Piaget's ideas, consider reading some of his best books. Now try this.